And okay, class, as promised, um, I'm going to get this video up for you. And the next step in this is for your um, visual merchandising um, of your retail space. You know, we're just using Illustrator. We're not using CAD or anything like that. So i um, just going to show you a couple of tricks that you can do um, to get a floor plan or a merchandising plan together to show a potential client. Um, and it's you know very simple so all we have to do now is and mine and please know that my demo is very sparse I just have a few things in the floor plan just so you can see how to do it um, and then obviously you'll work yours with the amount of displays and furnishings that you may have so the first thing I'm going to do is um, if you remember I had put shadows in the corners of the room um, just for a little bit of depth is it necessary do you have to No, but you know it does give a little like I said, well, number one is sense of depth, but it's a great little nuance, I think, to add to the plan, um, just visually. So what I'm going to do is, above my doors and windows, I'm going to go right here and create a new layer and then name this um, Floor Shadows. How about that? And I'm um, okay. So then the first thing I'm going to do, and certainly making certain that these are locked, okay? Um, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I am going to draw a box the size of the room and don't freak out I have a fill on so that's perfectly okay um, what you're going to do is you're going to drop down and if you notice here there is a super soft vignette you could do something along those lines or there's another one we can use here but if you do the vignette what we can do is go here to our gradient tool over here on the left. I'm going to zoom out a little so I can take this and spread it out to the corners just a little. Just like that. Add some shadow. Now I don't like the fact that my shadows are black. Um, I have a hardwood floor and I would like the shadows to actually work with that. So I'm going to come over here and grab the gradient tool over on the right side on my toolbar and here it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on this and go to my swatches and there's a dark brown that's in here that I want to use. So I'm going to click that one, same thing, swatches, dark brown, same thing, swatches, dark brown. So now I have all the dark brown in and here's a gradient slider so if you notice what happens when I slide this or when I slide this one. So you can play around as you feel appropriate on yours. Um, get it the way you like. But that's what these would do and just kind of allow you to play with that a little bit. So now that we have our shadows in the corners of the room, um, what I'd like to do now is lock it. Please lock it. Then the next step is I want to add shadows on my floor displays. Um, so I have these tables here, and I'm going to hit V. Remember, that's a shortcut to take us back to the selection tool here. And so if you notice, I have my displays here, and this is a um, tall bookcase or a tall, should I say, shelf that goes from, up from the floor to the ceiling, um, or almost the ceiling. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cast shadows on the floor underneath these. So the best way to do this is I'm just going to grab this, and I'm going to go to my display, and I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy and paste in front, which is Command uh, F on a Mac or Control. And trust me, it's on top. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this to that dark brown color again. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and pull it off to the side, um, kind of using the logic of light a little bit in terms of we've got a window here. So light's coming in, so I'm going to have the shadows kind of cast this way. Um, once I've done that, I'm going to go up to the effect. And if you go up to the effect, you'll notice that you've got Illustrator effects, and we also have Photoshop effects. And so we can get a blur. Now we don't have the variety that we get in Photoshop, but we do have the ability to blur something. So um, I'm going to go over here and use the Gaussian Blur. And make certain you hit preview so you can kind of see. And if you noticed right here, I just pointed like you could see my finger, sorry. Um, right here, you've noticed, so you can play with the blur a little bit um, if you want and get it a little more like that. When you're happy, hit OK. 
And now what I'm going to do is right click and arrange and I'm going to send it to the back. So now it's gone back underneath my round table and now I can play around. Oops, I hit that instead of the shadow. There's the shadow. Um, I'm going to pull it out just a little bit more so you can see that. Um, when we zoom in, you can kind of see. Now I'm going to edge it over just a little. Okay, now that I've got it the way I wanted, I'm not going to draw that again. Why should I? I'm just going to hold the Alt key. I'm going to select it, hold the Alt key, drag it. There's another one. Hold the Alt key, drag it. There's another one. And now I have three shadows underneath my tables here. Um, now what I can do is go up here and do the same thing. I'm going to copy, which is Command C. And then Command F is paste on top. Can you hit Command V? Yes, but it'll go somewhere else, so I don't, don't want to drag it up. I could. I mean, you certainly could. But remember, Command F is paste on, on top or paste in front. And um, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take it. I'm going to drag it down a little. Kind of do this. Um, just so we can get this going. I'm going to put this here. Go back to Effect. Go to Blur. Oops. Go to Blur. Gaussian Blur. I'm just going to keep it on what I had before. Put the preview. Say OK. And when you're happy, Right click or control if you don't have a mouse on a Mac and transform or arrange. I'm sorry, I'm going to send it to the back. So now I have these. Now, the next thing I wanted to show you um, is if you had any type of area rugs or anything like that that you could bring those in. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and on top of my floor shadows, I'm going to add a new layer right here. And I'm going to do, you know what, I'm going to put it under my floor shadows so that way they'll get the shadow as well. And I'm going to double click and do area rugs. Okay, so I have these. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and open Photoshop. And as you can see, I have several rugs here that I've already put in that I want to use. So, what I've done is, let me see, this one's probably the best one for this. What I've done on this one, come on, control D, get the ants to go away, is let me go back. Sorry, it's just opening. It's been open for a little bit, so let me see if it, okay, it'll take me back. Perfect. And if you notice, when I brought it into here, I had this white around it. That was just the image that I found on the internet that I liked in terms of the vintage place I was looking at for the rugs. But I don't want this because if I bring that over to Illustrator, I'm going to have this, you know, white uneven band around my rug. So what I'm going to do is use something called the Magic Eraser tool. So if you go here to the eraser, if you see at the very bottom, it's something called Magic Eraser. All you have to do is click and it takes away the white background and now I have a transparent background. And at this point, all I do now is select all, which is Command A, and then Command C, which is copy. I'm going to go back to Illustrator and on my area rug, I am going to, I'm going to lock that layer up there, and I'm going to Command V and I'm going to paste it. So what you need to do is remember to put your grids and guides on while you're working to make certain everything is to scale. So remember also command apostrophe is the shortcut for this. So you need to scale this. I'm not certain what the size of yours is, but whatever the size is, scale it to fit your grid. Remember this is half inch. So every half inch, every grid equates to a foot in life. So maybe I'm gonna do something, <coughs> excuse me, something like this here and I'm going to go back to Photoshop um, and if you'll notice here oh we already did that one sorry go to this one um, I've already taken the magic eraser on this one so it's ready to go so I just hit the magic eraser right around the edge and you can see that it's transparent um, it's already selected so select all and then copy control C back here to Illustrator and Command V, which is Paste. This one is quite large, um, 
So I'm going to get this to go to scale and then bring this back in and maybe I want to do a layering effect here. So this is where you can kind of start playing with placing your area rugs. And if you have this kind of boho feel, if this is the kind of the thing that you're going for, um, you know, these are great rugs for that. So maybe I have something like that. That one's a little smaller. Then I've got one more that I want to use. Um, and I'm going to grab this one. And same thing, select all. It's already selected. As you can see, the marching ant set or go around it. But to select, remember, Command A, Command C to copy, and then back to Illustrator, and Command V or Control on a PC to paste. So now on this one, just the opposite, I'm going to make this one a little larger to fit the space. And maybe I want this one to kind of take most of the floor. Let's see, maybe something like that. And obviously this one now has covered the other two. So remember what you can do. Right click, arrange, and then you can send it to the back. And I can send it underneath those um, as well. And now I've got rugs. And then, like I said, at this point you can still keep playing. Get it the way you want it. Um, if you want these on a diagonal, you know, maybe you want something like that. Maybe you don't. Maybe it's too much. But, you know. You're the designer, right? <laughs> so get it the way you want it. You're merchandising this space for a client, so um, make certain that it's something um, that you want to show them. And I might do something like this. And so then I have my displays around this way. Now what I'm going to do is I've done the same thing, and I've already kind of brought these. If you notice, I'm going to zoom out a little over here to the side. I have some pieces of wood um, that I want to clip to these because it's all about the texture and this reclaimed salvage wood that I want to use on these tables. So instead of just filling it with the color of wood, I actually really do want the texture and I want the planks and all those things to be completely visible in my uh, retail merchandising plan. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to turn off my grid right now because um, it's kind of in my way visually. I don't really want to see it at this moment. So remember, command, apostrophe, it goes away. So then I'm going to go and lock my area rug, unlock my displays, and what I'm going to do is on these, I'm going to, and I've already done the shadow, so I'm going to have to sandwich this in between the shadow and the um, piece of wood that I'm doing. So there's two things I can do. Actually what I want to do is, I'm going to zoom in so you can see. I can sandwich this one in between, or just as easily, I can just hit Control, Arrange, Bring to the Front. Now this one is on the front. This is now sandwiched between the shadow. And then get it the way you want it. And then remember, so you select this. You have to have both of them selected, so hold the Shift key. And then right-click, Make Clipping Mask. Now. It is not unusual for this to happen. If you notice, we've lost the black stroke. It's very easy. You go back in and put it right back in. So I'm going to touch this, and you're going to notice here, if you hover, it tells you to edit clipping path, and here, edit contents. So if you click on this, this is actually the image. I'm going to click back on this, and we get this option. So when I click back on this, I'm going to take this back to black, and back to 0.031 and my stroke is back on. So now I'm going to do the same thing for the other two. Um, I'm going to go grab, let's see, I'm going to grab this one, bring it here. These are in front already, so let me tilt this the way I want it. And I'm also going to make a copy of this really quickly because I'm going to Oops, Alt, drag, because I'm going to do the other table with that one too. So I'm going to do this, and then hold the Shift key, select a table, right click, make clipping mask. I've lost the stroke, so I'm going to come over here. Now if I click on this now, I don't get the option. So if you click on this and then go back to this, the stroke option comes up, and then 0.31 is what we were working with, so don't forget that. And then I'm going to do it one more time with this one. 
and pull this down here and same thing hold the shift key now they're both selected right click make clipping mask and then I've lost my stroke no worries because then I go over here and then back to here stroke black and then stroke weights 0 0.031 and we are back in good shape so there we are so it's starting to come together it's really exciting um, now what I'm gonna do is one more thing up here and I'm brought in this wood now what I could do is this I could put this wood here um, let me bring this to the well you know what let me just bring it over here oops wrong one. Oh, it's so close to it okay there it is ah okay let me zoom in so I can see what I'm doing sorry <laughs> where is my wood there it is now let me see if I can slip this away just for a second I am okay so if I were to do this and hold the alt key and drag another piece together you know I could kind of make the board that way and this one it's not actually that bad right right through here because they actually come together pretty well but if I zoom out and then do this again I can make it long enough to where these three fit this if it isn't working for you you could also take it and you could stretch it to fit it won't matter so much it's just going to be clipped to this um, for your floor merchandising plan you will actually have a sample on your boards that a client would see what it was you know in, in terms of that but you know this one actually did work pretty well and scale wise I'm going to keep it so I'm going to go back and put these three together so I'm going to select this one this one and this one and then I'm going to right click and group them so now they're all one um, but like I said this may not work for you this just happened to but if I had to do more than one it would start creating a pattern and then I probably wouldn't do it but if I'm I'm okay with these three it's, it's all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab these now and they should automatically go to the back which they did so now I'm gonna hold the shift key and select the white pen drawing that I have on top of it and then right click make clipping mask there it is and on this um, here, back here, I've lost my stroke, no problem, we know how to get it back. Um, and there it is, and so Command-0 will take us to the size of the artboard, and you can kind of zoom out and see, see your work. And then you can move, oops, it's definitely, and this is something too, um, why don't we take that, hold the Shift key, and select the table, and then right click and group those so if, now if you want to start moving things around the shadows will go with you if I would get them grouped this is what happens when I zoom out now hold the shift key okay now they're both selected so point to this is zoom in so you can see what you're doing um, now I'm going to move this around they should yes okay they're together um, so I can go ahead and move these around if you want the planks going this direction for some reason they you can move it um, and then so you can kind of get your space filled in the way you would like um, and so that is a very easy way to get your merchandising plan um, together in Illustrator to present to a client in terms of just getting a feel for the floor with some of the actual materials that are going to be used um, um, and then that's it. So the next video, what I'm going to do is will be how to do your planogram, or some people refer to them as elevations, but in um, in visual merchandising, they're often referred to as planograms. So that video will be coming up next for you guys. All right, bye.